Okay, today I'm going to show you how we're going to level the ceiling. And we've done this many times before and I'm not a professional um, contractor by any means at all. Um, first thing you wanna do is get a laser level. And I built this little birdhouse, my husband calls it. And I set it level in two planes. And I also marked um, the base where it sits on that, so I, if I ever have to move it, um, I can put it right back where it was, re-level it, and continue on my way. You'll also notice that I drew a line where the laser hits all the way around, because this room tends to be bright. And I also marked where the studs were at the top and the ceiling. Um, I went around with screws and I marked um, where the studs were and I also marked the depth at those studs and I found my lowest point which here was four and three quarters and that becomes important later. So the first thing I did was take a string line to those studs I marked and mark them all the way along the room and I snapped the chalk line. And then I went to where I'm gonna put my new ones and I snapped the chalk line there to keep them nice and straight, 16 inch on center, so I can use five eighths inch drywall on the ceiling. And there's some debate about the what size and what, what thickness, but um, most people agree that 16 on center is good for five eighths inch drywall. So, and I screw down to those studs Once you get that all gridded up, then you see on my little sticky note, it fell on a girl, and this is the way I do it. <laughs> and I measure down with my laser, which is over here, and I beam that laser across the room, and I actually get up onto my ladder. Okay, so I get my measuring tape, and I measure where that beam hits. And right now, let's see if I can pick it up on this one. My magic number, if you can see it, is four and a quarter. And I call that, that's my, where I want all my studs to hit across the room is four and a quarter. Nice and level across. And um, my lowest point was four and three quarters. But I had to refigure, I had to refigure because we had a low spot in the ceiling, which dips down. And you notice I am not taking the popcorn off, and the reason why is we have blown in insulation. It's 100 plus degrees, and so we decided just to drop it down another half inch all the way around. So instead of being four and three quarters, my magic number is four and a half, which gives me another half inch to play with up there in the, um, in these, uh, I guess you call them kind of stringers or things. Anyway, at that point, like I said, I start measuring and I measure along the grid lines. And I just take my, my <clears throat> measuring tape and I just go along and wherever it tells me with my magic number that I'm off, that's what I mark it. And that's the, the dimensions of a two by four or half inch plywood or quarter inch plywood and the multiples thereof. And I start at my low end, which is going to take two inches. And that's why we're leveling because it's two inches plus off, almost three inches off. And where my two inches stops from that wall down there to here, it's two inches. Um, that's the most it can take in um, strips. And then from here to here, it's one, and, it's one and a half inches. From here to here, it's one inch. To here to there, it's three quarters. And from there to the next one, it's a half inch. And on and on. And you want your little pieces to be closest to the wall. So I actually took my tape measure and I have stapled this to the ceiling with a um, 
staple gun, regular um, staple gun. Our staple bumps, that's exactly, my staple is exactly where that measurement changes on my laser level. I don't think I have it directed quite the right way here. Um, and, uh, and that's how I do it. I measure each of these pieces and I cut those pieces. Like here, on that first one, I'll cut a two by four. Um, how are the distances between the wall and that um, staple? And then I'll measure from here to here with a half inch piece. I'll put that half inch up all the way to the wall first, and then my two by four will come to here. And as you can see, I have some I've already done. You see my small pieces that are on the bottom, or I guess the very top of the ceiling. And then my long stringers are on the bottom. And we just like these two by fours. We have more stability. Um, we also have strips of plywood that we go by four by four. It just gives us more um, support, more meat to grab into. We put that drywall on. And uh, keep you posted. If you have any questions, please post them. It is confusing, and I've done this, this is my second full ceiling doing this and it worked out great the first time. Um, if you do have any light fixtures that you're going to have to cut a hole, then um, what you do is you plumb bob the floor. So you'll put your little plumb bob right on the, like hanging from the light fixture. And all it is is a weight with a string on it, it's a plumb bob. So then you drop it to the floor, mark the floor. And then when you get your drywall up, you'll know exactly where your hole is because you'll put your plumb bob centered right under the hole. And that's how I level the ceiling. So I'll keep you updated when I get all this, um, all these strips up. Just a tip for us girls, <laughs> as we're putting this on the ceiling, probably the guys do it too, but always put your screws in, um, you measure right on on the board, you've got your marks on the ceiling, which makes it real convenient. Mine's 16 on center. And okay, I know it's a mess down here. Um, for me, it's easier to put the screws on before I get it to the ceiling because I am a girl and I'm a wimpy girl. But um, so what I do is I I um just take my tape measure. And then mark it. I just pull that tape measure right along the board, and you see these nice red marks. That's your 16 on center, and my ceiling, fortunately, is 16 on center. And so I have to put my screws right on it. And I know this doesn't line up particularly because um, this board isn't going to go right on stud to stud. It's going to go to one of my shim boards. So you can reline it up here. It'll go 16 on center there. So. And that makes it easy on the floor, especially when you match it up to those grids up there. It makes it easy just to get right in and you know right where they are when you're working over your head. So those are my, my shim boards that I'm gonna be screwing into. So that's just a tip for you. Now I string my line, I use a chalk line. This is what they look like. And you pull out the line to unhook it. And um, just pull it out, and that's your chalk line. Um, notice it has a hole, and that's why I put the screws um, on the studs because I can do this all by myself. I can just put this right on the screw and string it across the room and hold the other end next to the other screw, and I just snap that line and I get a perfect line every time. So easy peasy for one person, especially a girl, to do this. So, um, and here we are, we're four rows in, and you'll notice that, um, I really can't tell, that I've, I've screwed at least the bottom um, spacer to the studs, which are going this way. And these are my space, or my, <clears throat> my, what do you call it, stringers, that I'll be actually screwing the drywall to. And I've completed four rows. And they're all at my magic number at four and one fourth inches. All nice and level and plumb. Oh, not plumb, but they're level with themselves. And um, 
picture to see how off this actual ceiling was and why we had to level it. So when we get to the crown molding, we'll be able to um, put crown molding up because right now it was four, three or four inches off and there's no way I can do crown molding around and keep it all nice and level uh, without leveling the ceiling first. So, um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be glad to share some uh, more of my tips, but um, yeah, um, <clears throat> cut, cut all of my um, stock lumber according to my little measurements up here, which I pre-measured using my laser level. And I uh, put the stock lumber up and then I shim to my laser line. And uh, it's been working out great so far. And I've got about, um, see, about half the room to go. I can zoom out a little bit. And, uh, yeah, <clears throat> my ceiling fan, it was a bronze color and it was dying and um, I haven't found anything I like yet. So I'm just spray painting it and uh, it's a great time to spray paint your ceiling fan because it's hanging there and you don't care about the ceiling. So I spray painted it and uh, I'm going to drop that out when I get to that row and uh, um, I'll put it back up temporarily with a new um, medallion on there, on the new ceiling, and it'll work until I find something I like and can afford. So, so that's it so far. <clears throat> half to go and half, about half done. So. That's the progress. We've um, found yet some more windows with no insulation. I put some up there on the top just to keep the heat out. It's so hot. And I was taking the trim off, but the window was coming out with it. So um, we have the windows on order. And um, they're low E, which this is not. And uh, there's so much heat coming in. And I put some insulation on it too, because there wasn't any. And this window we read was from 1989, so it's a three-year-old window. Is that right? Well, somewhere around there. <clears throat> and it wasn't put in correctly either. So there's barely any screws or anything holding these doors and windows in. And we're going to remedy that. Um, they're going to be better windows. And they're going to actually be on, secured to something. <laughs> so um, I'll keep you posted. But... Uh, that's it so far. Another hint is when you put your shims in, sides here, that you always, this is a quarter inch shim, it's flat, but this is a regular shim. It's wedge shaped, so you'll want to always have a matching shim going the other way on the other side, so it's nice and flat, so you get a nice flat um, meeting place where they match up, where your boards match up, so your ceiling's nice and flat. So that's what I do. So next, screw up and get ready here to put these screws in. And I put a shim in here, just it's loose, and I'll put. Um, this is a quarter inch um, flat shim, and I'll put those wedge shims in here, and then I'll be checking for my um, uh, my magic number from here with my laser level, and then I'll screw it in. Okay. Um, because I am a girl, the screws I use, um, I use these nice deck screws. <clears throat> they have this great head on them. It's easier for me to use. They're a little more expensive than um, <clears throat> the Phillips screws, but there's so much torque, much more torque on them that um, they go in easier for me. I don't have to work so hard to get them in the wood. So I have different sizes depending on the um, depth the wood I'm working on and I have to get through the drywall to get to the stud through this wood so it depends on the length I need 
So I have um, small, like one inch, and these are two inch, and these are three inch. Um, I have some two and a half around here somewhere, but these are just the little deck screws. And I think they come in different color, depending on what store you're in. Um, green or beige color. Which one are you? They're just the deck plus. And these are two and a half. So um, um, they come with the bit. I do recommend that you use the gold bit that they have. Some of them, for the smaller boxes, come with this um, metal um, silvery bit, which is so soft it just um, it doesn't ha handle these longer screws really well. So I like these um, these golder bit, gold bits that come with the bigger screws. They um, seem to be harder and uh, less apt to, to round off the ends, and they last a lot longer. The other ones. I just toss them out. So with the, every time you get a box, you get a new bit. So um, so use it.